Keys to Success and Riches We all should desire to be successful in life. Being successful is different from being privileged. Being successful suggests that I have reached a goal that was predetermined. I have accomplished a mission due to my actions and character. Success is not the same for all, as one goals and missions are not the same. Some successes, seemingly good for some, are horrible for others. Adolf Hitler's successes was horrible for the Jews. The United States economy of the South was good for the plantation and slave owners but horrible for those Africans enslaved. The joyous discovery and arrival of Europeans in America was an invasion to the indigenous people. What type of success should we thrive to obtain? All of us should set goals and have a mission that is good and does no harm. It does not create negative karma. If we can be successful in creatively making the circumstances of existence better, we should be eager to do so. If we can enlighten and elevate the thinkings of others, we have used our talents in the most noble manner. Teaching a person How to fish has long-term results and it's better than providing a fish sandwich. Success can be a selfish, accomplished endeavor. However, your success can and should be a river of life that aids the material and the spiritual needs of fallen humanity. Such success is desirable and needed. Hopefully, you are not one of who thinks success is not in your stars. Prayerfully, you have not convinced yourself that you cannot have the success that others have manifest. By such thinking, and mental states, you are constructing an existence based on doubts rather than noble dreams. Too many are afraid to try. Too many think how embarrassing it will be to fail. Never try. Eliminating the opportunity of learning the intermittent lessons from the trials of life that contributes to your understanding and to you developing a state of consciousness that will prepare you to exceed. Some have determined that it's too much hard work. Others are comfortable hiding behind such notions that I'm not smart enough. I'm satisfied with just getting by. If you heard the lesson on fulfillment, the first edict of God to man, God mandated that we are to be successful. Is that not another term to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue and have dominion? God didn't say to impose limits on your abilities nor on the authority of divinity. No. Rather, God implied to attain and accomplish the very state and things that you desire. Have the God kind of faith. Knowing divine principles, you are to consciously affirm the truth of your being. I can succeed. I can and will live a life of attaining my noble desires. I'm mandated by God to be successful. 
It is my task and my desire to be fruitful, to multiply, to renew, to conquer, and establish dominion. By the Spirit of God in me, I shall reach my human potential. I shall obtain my spiritual goals. God would not mandate what I could not do. God expects me to, to obtain, to accomplish, to fulfill, to overcome, and become joint heirs with Christ. With the divine perception that I am created in the image of God. With the perception that I am a child of the Most High God. I shall come to the realization of my divine and human expectations. I can create abundance. I'm able to demonstrate and experience the wealth of creation. God abundant wealth has everything I need. All that I need already exists in the kingdom of God. All my desires are established in the wealth of God's wisdom. God's wisdom in the invisible kingdom of God is unlimited and immeasurable. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not like. We can do, we, we must stay focused on God and remove everything else. We have to start adding and applying more things to our life, which is to be able to meditate to be able to listen when God is talking to our spirit. Because, yes, he did say he wished that all his people would be fruitful, but it's, it comes with a price. It comes with that you will make a sacrifice. And through that sacrifice, once we make that sacrifice, once we become reborn again, once we start acknowledging that God is a higher being and a higher power that lives inside of us, that everything that he gave Jesus, everything that he allowed his son Jesus to become, we can become it too because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And our reward of that is knowing that every day on a daily basis that we must start off repenting for our sins. And once we, we do this, not saying that we won't sin again, but just to repent to know that when Jesus incinerated up to heaven, all of these stains went up with him that will make us greater beings and greater people, that we will not only be able to love the Lord, we will be able to love one another, and then we will start being able to receive these gifts, these fruits, that he speak of. Sure, and, and so yes, and you, not, that's another way of good can is saying that this is a map. God has given us a map to success, to prosperity, to health. Are we going to follow that map, or are we going to try to make a new map, uh, or make a, a a different map? Just one more pause for to say if any. We're going to go on with the lesson and get this, uh, his uh, Supreme Father Marshall's definition of wealth. So I'm actually going to mute everybody again. And we'll go back to the record, the, his recording. Wealth is expression of God's abundance. Do you desire to express God abundance? God would not give you if you don't want it or work in a productive manner to increase, to replenish, to overcome the adversities and maintain what you gain. Wealth is a state of being unlimited in some meaningful manner. For some wealth is money. For others, it is wisdom. For those who have a 
wealth of love and friendship. That's wealth to them. Wealth conveys that you are not lacking in the things that are desirable. Many have money, but lack love, are poor in happiness. There are no lack in this abundant universe. The cosmos is replete with abundance. The solar system is a circuit of abundance. Our sun has an overwhelming abundance of energy. Our sun is just one of billions of suns that are energy sources that are central to the solar system. Within our galaxy are billions of solar systems. Our galaxy is only one of the billions of galaxies that have billions of solar systems in the vastness of space. There is abundant room for billions of more galaxies with billions of more solar systems to reside. Maybe you're on the wrong planet or in the wrong galaxy. Or could it be that we have the wrong perception or an erroneous mindset? Let me ask you, is the one sperm emitted by your physical paternal pretender when the context amongst the number of sperms released to be large in the egg provided by our maternal progenitor to be born a loser? To be born one just standing by? To be born barely existing? Was a miracle of cellular generation designed to produce human failures? Am I encoded to be deficient? Or am I programming my own failures? We have seen individuals with human disabilities succeed. We have seen or heard of individuals of every description, race, gender, color, culture, orientation, nationality, obtain fulfillment. We have seen determined individuals without a privileged birth reach the heights of the endeavor. We have seen those of privileged birth come to great disasters. We have seen tyrants become furors, idiots become presidents. Slave owners have become the leaders of the free nation. We have seen some climb to the summit of success only to crash in the Grand Canyon of misery. Trying to be like someone else, please those that are corrupt and have an insatiable lust for those things that are corrupt. It's not a sure means to gain or sustain success. What is required is that you discover and actualize the true self within you and manifest your noble qualities as a human being. Was it not made plain? I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Let me re-emphasize that true wealth it's not just having money and material resources. Anytime you have more than what you need, you are wealth. If you fall into quicksand, money in the pockets, your credit card, in your wallet, your bank account won't pull you out. The black life experience of bringing up children in yonder years was quite different 
for many of the baby boomers era that are now experiencing some degree of, su of a successful life. These youngsters were seldom told that they were poor, disadvantaged, incapable, underprivileged. No. The focus was making something of yourself, displaying your dignity. We were told to prepare ourselves and be the best that we could be. We were told we could obtain what we wanted. I know of a number of those raised in the projects and in poverty, like me, who have established themselves by applying an indomitable spirit of hope. Hope, the ability to support. Before we go on to hope, uh, which is the next one, I uh, want to again open up the mics for us to discuss um, the concept of wealth. I'm all. And let's talk about wealth. Anyone have any thoughts about wealth? Wait, hold it. I think Teresa is talking. I had a mute. Hello, Teresa? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I was just sitting here thinking that we as a people need to broaden our definitions of, of a lot of these uh, words like wealth and, and health and be fruitful and multiply. I mean, maybe a lot of things that that were like uh, words that would give us inspiration. If we take the the uh, we get a broader definition of it. That's what I'm trying to say. A broader definition of it. Yeah, we need spiritual not definitions because now the, we not confine the actual word to what we've been maybe told because uh i and and as i was sitting here thinking about what marshall was saying a lot of us didn't even know we were poor as kids i didn't know i was poor and and just because i was in a different circumstance i didn't i didn't grow up in the in the project but my parents struggled just like the people in the project, but I, I didn't know that. I never knew I was poor. I, I, I never knew we were even struggling. And your parents made things work. You know, you had to do better than them. You had to go to school. You had to go to college. I mean, when I, when I finished high school, it wasn't no question of what, what I was going to do. I already had that in me to go off to college. And then I remember as a little girl, I used to hate to meet people because they would always ask you, what you going to be when you grow up? Oh, I hated that. But you were, you had to, from a little child, you were, I guess, encouraged to think about, okay, what, what it going to be when you grow up? Me, that was what a lot of uh, people would ask you, even the kids. And I don't know if they're still doing that in these days and times. Oh, that's all I had to say. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Some of the young ones, what they were being told, because uh, I'm not sure either. I don't know if they get that same uh, instruction, you know, where we were instructed that, yeah, a lot of times, like you said, Marsha said that. Uh, most of our life we grew up, we were in the projects. Um, and yes, and it, uh, some of you that weren't, weren't living in the projects were, were struggling as far as the parents were. But a lot, they hid that from the children a lot. And a lot of times you did not, you were poor and did not know that you were poor because 
of all the things, all the love you get, all the attention you would get, all the other things you would get, you were not aware of that until you, uh, sometimes you look at TV, you see how, other, uh, how people lived on TV and said, oh, you know, they're living differently from us. Uh, but, but the funny thing about it to me, I remember uh, it was always strange that uh, when, when, you know, a lot of women were looking at the soap operas and a lot of times when they would, th they would kind of talk about the soap operas, they would actually talk about how crazy white people were uh, and how uh, 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 nasty uh, uh, they were uh, by looking at some of those things and seeing how their, their, their lives were. Um, so even though we were not in, in living at that level, you still saw that is some of the things you said, I don't want to live like that. Uh, I'd rather live in a place where I'm being loved and comforted. Uh, anyone else like to have anything to say? Yeah, I just want to agree with uh, Ms. Teresa on everything she said. And just to use another situation, even if you look at our president today, according to his wealth. And the thing is, Father, well, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad person because I don't know him well enough to judge him because the verse said we shouldn't judge, but you can just see what came along with his wealth. The envy, the scripes, the disrespect, the jealousy, the 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 just wanna do what he wanna do. But even if you see now in these days and time as you watched him on TV the other day, he have now ran up against a force that is worse than him. Now he's talking about praying because that we all should pray. Now he want to open up churches, but something that wasn't a part of the wealth that he retained as he was he was growing up, you know. And now we we see the we see this this this, this different transformation that he that is is coming upon him now because he see that he's caught up in the same epidemic as everybody else, and he don't know how to get out of this. This ain't nothing that you can buy your way out of. This is something that God has to deliver us out of, and, he, and, he's, and he's understanding it. It seems like he's understanding that now, you know, and, and uh, that's just the type of wealth that I don't desire to have, you know. I want wealth, but I want it in the type of desire that comes through our father, the riches and the wealth that he has for us. So that was just my comment. Yeah. Is that like uh, uh, Father Marshall's definition that wealth is God's abundance uh, being expressed? So there's a wealth that you can get that is not calculated in dollars. It's just calculating wealth in dollars uh, will have you actually on the wrong path. So uh, anyone else lack like anything to say before I mute everyone? And we talk about hope now, uh, or he talked about hope. He's gonna give us more on this lesson and he's going to be talking about hope and what is hope. Sustain your imagination, envision of better circumstances and condition. Those that accepted the challenges of adversity and fainted not, those blessed enough to be entrenched in love to such a degree that gave little attention to being poor in the material sense. They endured to the end. I've seen some smarter than most with more resources, but lost hope and failed. The wise king Solomon told us, but there is no vision people perish. A vision is, in vital ways, the flame that lights the way in the darkest circumstances. It's hope. It's also the light of the lantern, which is your plan of success, a plan of hope. I need not tell you that you have heard, a person without a plan plans to fail. You must have a plan that is sequentially and successfully executed. Just getting by 
day by day. It's not a plan that's designed to contribute to significance, successful outcomes. Your first plan for a successful life begins with changing you. One of the first significant change in man evolution was the power of fire and the ability to use fire for the concerns and advancement of his or her living and life. Man, to use fire had to overcome fear. So the precious lesson was preparing our minds to receive. The previous lesson was preparing our minds to reset its focus. That is to concentrate upon the innate ability that we have to succeed. Attaining both our human and divine potential. The goal is to live, not just exist. You need to know that you are significant and a contributor to the involvement in, of mankind and the unfoldment of the soul. We will discuss to the degree that we can the power of fire. Okay, we're going to hold there for a minute uh, to talk about the expectations and having that plan uh, to see if anyone have any comments about hope uh that expectation and uh having a plan in life so the mics are open anyone have any comments about hope expectations and a plan for your life well you want to say must have a plan to, to proceed. You can't go willy nilly with nothing. So that, that's but how many of us do this? Yeah, but how many of us usually see a plan as hope, as your expectations? Uh, so do you see the correlation between talking about hope and having a plan? The plan your hope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the plan. <laughs> because remember, when we talk about hope, it's your expectation. And the reason why a plan is your expectation is if you don't have an expectation, then whatever happens uh, uh, just happens. And you really don't know how to respond to it step by step. I always remembered in the uh, in reading about uh, the book Alex, Alice in Wonderland, and I think it's in Alice in Wonderland. I know it's one of those uh, books that uh, the man wrote about Alice. There's a conversation between Alice and uh, the caterpillar, or the Chester cat. I can't now. I can't remember which one. But uh, Alice asked the the him. Uh, she's at this crossroads and she asked him which way should i go and he asked her well where are you going and she says i don't know so he answers to her it doesn't matter so if you don't have a plan of where you're going even if you ask somebody what should you do how can they tell you which way to go and you don't know where you're going uh, so that plan that expectation if you have, you don't have an expectation, because remember when he was talking about success, if you don't have an expectation in your life of being successful, if you don't have an expectation in your life of uh, li living uh, uh, by the, you know, the, the uh, commandments or the directions of God, then whatever you do in life, it doesn't matter because you don't even have an expectation of where you're going. Nothing really matters on how it's done. But having that expectation or that plan actually helps you build upon that plan, even if you get to another point in the plan and say, oh, I need to change this. Uh, I didn't plan far enough. I didn't plan I was going far enough. But if you have no plan, you wouldn't even know that you had under uh, shot your goal, that you had done something under it. 
but showing that, that that plan or that expectation is a way to help you get in, uh, in, in sync with what's happening around you. The plan actually makes you pay attention to your life. And if, if there's no one else have any comments, we didn't go, he's gonna talk about fire and he's going to uh, talk about the fire signs. And I think I'm gonna go into, um, well, no, I'll see the fire signs because the next thing he's gonna talk about is uh, some keys to success and he's gonna give you a story. So again, I'm gonna, everybody, Go back to our recording and start playing. He's talking about fire. Fire is a, is a tremendous life force. Fire can create, it can preserve, protect, it can destroy. Fire is a transforming force. It initiates and ignites. It regenerates and eliminates. It is the most prolific element of all the elements. One match has the capacity to ignite and energy to create, to preserve, or to destroy. Let's take a metaphysical or spiritual look at fire. The baptism of fire is the life prepared to receive creative energy of love and wisdom. It comes upon them. Let's look at the fire sign, the cardinal Aries, the fixed fire sign Leo, an immutable or flex fire sign Sagittarius. Three vital, viable principles. Aries is the energy to create the I am. Leo is the power of the will and the reality of love. Sagittarius is the power of vision, hope, and perception. You must ignite a fire within you that initiate the fire that creates and contribute to the true I am perception of you. You must ignite the fiery force of your will to forge a new existence and a grander and royal expression of love. You must ignite the vision of and hope that governs your actions and transforms your life. Your fire must destroy the false concept of self and inflame the higher consciousness of truth. The first key to success is that you must change in order to manifest success, to attain fulfillment, and live a prosperous life. If you don't change, things don't change. You see, the most essential change in your life is to change your thinking. The change of thought and thinking is governed by the mental eratroplicity of Gemini, I think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. By the air sign Libra, I balance. I'm not a fanatic or feeble. I do not faint. I restore and maintain equilibrium in all circumstances. We aspire to be greater by knowing the truth and from direct knowing of the spiritual experiences from the air side of Aquarius. Man, know thyself. Even persons that obtain so-called success by winnings most often lose what they have because they have not adequately changed the nature. They find themselves losing what they had. An impoverished mind creates impoverished results. Erroneous perceptions of doubt, fear, inadequacies, a sense of inferiority, maintaining an illusion that you were never meant to succeed, 
noting in arguments even with yourself there's no sense in trying to accomplish because you tried and failed before the others are holding me back or they are against me some concluded that the worst is the lot in life and for no valid rational explanation that success or attainment is not the deck of cards. Their very thoughts are working against their self-interest. They don't have the right covenant with God to evaluate and bring their lives in balance. They lack the certainty of knowing the divine truth of their higher self and lack the spiritual experiences that are wrought by the soul. With a mere higher perception that conveys, I am created for greatness, not fame, greatness. Such a one could focus their thoughts and transform their lives. Let's pause again for a moment. Uh, I actually went through three things. We went through fire. We talked about the fire signs and we talked about the air signs. Uh, and we're about to get to a story of, uh, of uh, a, a young 10 year old boy. But I wanted to take some time to uh, just open up the mics again to see if you can see how we earlier we were talking about, um, you know, we were mentioning having um, these guidelines or these commandments. And he talked about the, uh, the key phrases uh, and gave us a way of looking at those key phrases as something that would help you to understand a way of looking at um, your life. Does anyone like to have any comments about the, any of those? Uh, those look at those first two. The, he looked at the fire signs and he looked at the air signs. Does anyone have any comments on those? No comments at all. Oh, I see. I have uh, Satonia's with that. I didn't know that Satonia was there. How are you doing, Satonia? you can be with us. Shalom, everyone. I joined late, so I didn't, wasn't able to speak on the question you just asked. Okay. Yeah, and we're listening to a uh, recording by Supreme Father Marshall, and he was just talking, uh, the, the portion we just listened to, he was talking about the fire signs and the air signs, and the lesson that you learn from them from the keywords, how it worked with the, the getting a fire in your life, and how to uh, the air signs working with your mental um, abilities or mental uh, challenges that you have in life through those uh, air signs. And, uh, and you came at a time where he's going to, Marshall is going to tell us about a story. So I think we'll, I'm going to meet everybody again. And we're going to listen to this story of a 10 year old boy and see how, since we've been talking about expectancy, since we've been talking about having that attitude that of, of, of success, how this 10 year old boy uh, utilized these principles in his life. Let me tell you a story for a youngster about 10 years old, who was taken to a performance contest, seemingly improperly dressed for this event only getting the information the day of the event. The youngster went to the contestant area with his father and sat watching all the glamorous performers dress for this unique opportunity, many of whom had advanced notices of the contest and was perfectly dressed, costumed, outfitted, professionally made up for the contest to showcase the years of training. 
glazing around the room at the seemingly clear advantages of other competitors, the 10-year-old youngster mumbled softly but confidently to his father, I'm going to win this. How the child had less than a year of training in this particular technique of performance. His father was simply glad that the child could compete, grew confidence as his child's sense of certainty of winning. The youngster did exactly as he had the confidence and certainly certainty to do. To secure a spot in the first round, but then he had to compete against, against three of the candidates some candidates being a group. In front of professional performers, he had to compete. Most events were free and held at a mall. The first one was mid-morning. The final one that afternoon would be judged by some highly professional and one legendary judge. Somehow the crowd was aroused at the mall to a street like party. The hall where the final was held was swollen to near capacity as the young talents were called on stage. The last being this young 10 year old kid. The announcer and now, ladies and gentlemen, our last contestant, this youngster, age 10, in a pair of jeans, no makeup, and a t-shirt, Marshall Davis Jr., believing in himself rather than what he was lacking, leaped into notoriety has become an international tap dancer, more respectfully called Hoofers. You see, self-perception, self-confidence, along with preparation of self, are the catalysts to self-actualization and fulfillment. As was cited in the lesson on fruition, the edict, of God to man, you have to renew yourself. As stated, you have to renew the child within you to put the adult into the right mindset, the right spirit. A child shall lead you into greater possibilities. The child within you will give you visions and new expectations to take action committed to achieve. You have to unlearn your false perceptions and disavow your doubts and unbelief. Confirm, I would do what God has created and ordained me to do. I may not know exactly where I'm going, but I know it when I get there. Keep some room for spiritual guidance. Keep some room to expect the unexpected good. Understand, in order to perceive who you are, you have to unlearn and forget who and what you are not and cling to the right perception of self and the right perception of God. This is accomplished through the principle of the sign cancer. Okay, so I'm gonna pause again before we go into the signs. And uh, again, give uh, us a chance to talk about this story of having this child in us 
be be the one that's following a plan. Having a you know, because it we does say have a plan, but a lot of times we make uh, these over elaborate adult plans that have no room for uh, exploration. And here we have a story of a youngster uh, or having that young plan, sometime tapping into the child in you, the one that is being led or followed to the truth, to be the one that's leading a plan. Does anyone have any comments on this aspect of success? I had a thought. Yes, ma'am. It's Teresa. Um, you had this thing came into my mind. I can't teach a, a old dumb new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> but you certainly can, according to, to the way Marsha's saying. You need to move that old dog out of the way, put the puppy back in. Yes. That, as you're saying, when you and when you work with the spirit, that is so true. <laughs> When you get older. <laughs> yeah, because when you get old, you start forgetting that there's still that spirit of exploration uh, that's in a child that's in you. And you can't do it to that old crusty thing. But we're talking about renewing yourself, of being like the snake and taking off that old skin and removing it. And that's actually uh, renewing you. So, so when you're renewed, it's like becoming a child again. It's like giving yourself that total expectation that you don't know exactly where it is going, but you know that you're going to grow. Uh, that's what the snake, the snake doesn't know how far it's going to grow, but it knows that that old skin is what? It's not working for you anymore. Uh, I think later, uh, this one or the next one, he talks about that when you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result from it, uh, you're like a moron. And if you have been doing something over and over again and it doesn't and it's not been working for you, isn't it time to change? Isn't it time for a new game? Anyone else have any comments? <clears throat> We're almost through the recording. There's a, uh, let me turn my video off here, so I don't see what wants to be setting things up. Uh, but he's, he's going to talk about the, the water signs, but now he's on cancer. He's going to talk about the earth signs. Uh, and we'll go through that, and then uh, we'll stop and talk before we go into his final prayer. So uh, here, his keys to success, we're going to talk, he's going to talk about uh, the water signs and the lesson you can learn from the water signs. Yes, the illuminary of the crowd wants you to forgive yourself as well as others. The water sign Scorpio and its higher expression of the ego wants you to lift yourself to the summit of your higher desires. To come out of your nest of comfort and spread your wings of truth and love, accepting the challenge of a higher existence. The water mutable water sign, Pisces, wants you to flow with the spirit and accelerate the possibilities and potentials of a prosperous material and spiritual life. Swimming with the currents of fulfillment and self-actualization. The earth triplicity wants you to manifest your higher good. Taurus emanates and wants you to have what you want, but wants something worth having. Taurus would have you to recognize the spirit in all material manifestation and to bless and appreciate the great gift that God has installed within you and the things that you now have in your possession. Virgos will have you attend to details and formulate your plans and renew your life for greater prosperity 
by increasing your service to humanity. Capricorn enable you to obtain your true profession and realize your true purpose. Capricorn empower you to climb with the sure footedness of divine principles. What you decree on earth will be decreed in heaven. What manifests in heaven will manifest on earth. Decree your greatness as a soul in oneness with the abundance of the universe. And most importantly, as a spirit soul being, creation of God, forgetting the former life, press on towards the mark, the high calling of God, Christ in you, the expectation of glory. Okay, now the final part of it is a prayer, but we've reached the, uh, basically the end of the lesson talking about that decree. So I'm going to open up the mics again so we can discuss uh, this lesson and success. <laughs> for ourselves. So how, let's have some of your reactions and it can be a question or comment or, or, or whatever. This is an open time, this is also like an open mic. So what comments do we have from the congregation here? Anyone have any thoughts? Shalom. Satonia? I, I would just um, say that um, for, for what I was able to um, experience um, from today's lesson, and one of the most important things is that it is important to have the right perception and having the right perception and a higher understanding um, really will, you know, help to shape and guide, you know, our choices. And um, one of the reasons why I think this is so important is because, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of voices, a lot of information, a lot of a lot of everything coming from different directions. And if you don't have that as a foundation or, or even if you do, you don't have other people in your life to confirm it, it's easy for people to lose their way. And so um, from what I was able to experience, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful reminder of having a, um, of the importance of having the right perception, you know, of about, about yourself and that will, you know, influence and dictate, you know, how you perceive others and how you interact and engage with others. So um, that those would be my comments. And that was a, so true because if the whole thing was talking about a key to about being successful or a key to success. And part of that being that key to your success is what do you see your, who do you see yourself as? What do you see as your resources? And are they spiritual resources or are you letting the ways of the world uh, dictate how you even see yourself or look at yourself? Because that actually holds you back. If you, right. The thing that the world is going to teach you is going to try to suppress you so others can be more successful. And, and to me, what it is a lot of times is they pick the rule of what is success. And you should be choosing your own rule for what you determine as a success in life. Anyone else have any comments to, uh, or say more about that? If not, and if, Cause what I was thinking about at that time and I was talking about when you pick the rules, uh, there was a time ago when the, we went through a, uh, a, a lot of, uh, well, I can't even know what you call them now. You went to a lot of those social programming uh, events 
where they were getting you to try to learn how to interact with people. And one of them is called a, a, a star program, a star technique, a star project that you go through. And in the star project, they have these different color stars and they would indiscriminately pass out of various color stars to everyone. Everybody got a different number of stars. Uh, but what the process does is that the facilitator at a certain point, he would go and said, okay, uh, we're gonna put values to these stars and he would put values to each uh, color star. And after you put a value to those colored stars, uh, he would have people to go and count up uh, how much value they had. Now, when you first got the stars, you knew nothing about their value. So you didn't care what color star you had. But now that you start putting values to stars, you uh, are now saying, oh, I wanna make sure that I have the most valuable stars. And what he would do is based on uh, the, the numbers that people have, they would put them in these groups and some of the groups would be uh, in this privileged section and some would be in lower sections based on the number they got from those stars. And then after you go through that round of it, what they do is then then said, okay, when you go and we want you to interact and talk to people, but uh, when you talk to someone, uh, uh, you have to exchange a star. Now, you know that most people, if they go and they talk to someone, they're going to try to give out the lowest star they can when they uh, interact with the person. And uh, as you're going through and talking, some of the people that have all high stars, they don't even want to talk to anybody. Uh, they want to stand off because they figure, what, I got a good hand here, so I'm not going to talk to someone, especially I'm not going to talk to someone unless I think I can give them one of my lower stars and I can get a higher star. But what they don't know is after you go through that se session of exchanging stars, they come and they change the value of the stars. So you have been holding on to these stars of a certain color, and all of a sudden, you now, they change the value of the stars. And so that means that people that were holding on to stars because they thought they were valuable now could end up with stars that are not valuable. And it goes through several rounds like this. Uh, but what they do after you go through those two rounds where they pick the stars, the next thing they do is they let the people who have uh, the most valuable stars actually start putting the value to the stars. And that's kind of where we are now. The people who have the most of the resources that we think are the great resources, they put the value to the stars. And what they do is they're gonna put value to the stars that they have and put lesser values to the stars that they don't have. So you get trapped in this system of thinking that these arbitrary values that they put to these stars are more valuable than your interaction with the people around. So it's a very interesting uh, process to go through to see how these fake values, you know, they're always talking about fake news, but what they really should be talking about, what are some of the fake values that we have that we're living by? And how do we get rid of those fake values and start looking at things that are really of value? Uh, we even look at some of the critical processes now. They're trying to say, which one is more valuable to, to uh, this thing that they, the way they see the economy as being how much money the businesses are making? Or is it actually the health of the people? Which one actually has the most value? So we have to realize that there's a value system at work, but you get to choose how you value them. Uh, anyone else have any comments about that? No one else have any comments of, uh, uh, about the value of, uh, of things or about our lesson on today that has been on success. So we, because we have talked about success, we talked about a spiritual definition of wealth. We talked about hope. We talked about having a plan. We talked about how the elements of the of the astrology, you know, because usually when you look at astrology, people just want to know. Uh, what is my sign? And I think a little bit from what you heard today, you know that you need all the, each one has an element behind it and a way that it works with that element and the way that it works with the element actually should help you in your plan for life, that you want to have the inclusion. One thing I love about the way we learn astrology is that when you start hearing of the value uh, that each one can give to life, 
you start saying, you know something? We need all of those. We need all those things. We need the fire signs. We need the earth signs. We need the air signs. Uh, which one did I leave off? Uh, water. We need the water signs. We need all of those elements together to make a world, for it to come together and to give us a life that is worth living. And part of that is starting to look at what are your expectations? Because your expe expectations are really a part of what is your value system? Uh, how are you valuing things? And remember, Jesus told us that where, whatever you treasure, there your heart is also. And that treasure is your value system. That treasure that he's talking about is how you look at things and what you are expecting uh, of the things you want. So your treasure system or your value system actually controls your heart. And remember in the Hebrew, your heart is your inner being. Your inner being, uh, which is not just your heart being in you, but the heart for the Hebrew was your inner being, your inner spirit. Your, uh, sometimes they would call it the inner man. The inner man in you is actually thriving off of what you treasure, what you expect, uh, what you are going after. And the ways and rules of the Bible or the commandments or the prescriptions or, or, or whatever you call them are trying to get you to see, look at the higher value. Because when Jesus tells you that uh, whatever you treasure, that your heart is also, he then goes on to say, but why treasure things that rot away? Why treasure things that will pass away? Why treasure things that are not going to last? You should learn how to treasure things that do not pass away. So in other words, you should learn how to treasure spiritual things. So those spiritual things, those things that do not pass away, will actually give you the best value system in your life to be able to be the most successful. And when he says that, he says, and that doesn't mean that you won't have things in life, it will mean that you will have all things in your life. Because at the end of the passage, when he talks about your value system and your treasures, he says, seek you first the kingdom of heaven, which seeks you first things that, are, that don't pass away, uh that are spiritual that do last and all things then will be added unto you so you will have these things that you want in life all you have that infinite possibility in life but it all starts with are you valuing the right things because so many of our heartaches so many of our problems even some of our sicknesses from the stress we put on ourselves is based on are you valuing the right things Anyone else have any comments or think something you'd like to share? Yes, yes, yes. That was uh, that was uh, most dissolving. Uh, Father, I thank you for them. Uh, I, I I get out of uh, out of the lesson this this morning is to is saying stay focused more on God and shed everything else out of your life. That's not concerning God. And, you know, then we learn how to meditate. And as we learn these different ways and forms of meditation, a lot of times we ask God to give us wisdom. Mm -hmm. But we don't turn around and ask God to show us the trials that will come with wisdom. Mm -hmm. There's different trials that comes with everything that God has given us. And, you know, even with success and as Jeremiah 29 say about the plans and the future, we, we, we ought to learn to pray in the, in, in the meaning of that we can ask God to show us what we have in these plans, a way that, or what can we do that they will line up with the plans that he have for our future and the hope that he have for us. Because now, if we do that, that means everything is, is lining up. Yes. To one accord. And see, if things don't line up to that one accord, it's, that means something is off basis. And if it's, if it's off basis, that means you're going to have liking in your life. And, and we should not have no liking in our life. 
You know, when, 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 when God said, uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you my word, and my word was going to know on board, heaven and earth will wash away one day. It, it, it almost seemed like we went against the grain. You know, we don't worry about this world. We want the world. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he's telling us the world is going to wash away one day. And, 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 and my thing is I love the way that he will put things in your spirit. Now, mm-hmm. now we all know God has given us angels. And he said in his word that you ought to command your angels. I give you personal God and angels. Mike and Gabriel's angels that I have placed on assignment to war on your behalf. Now, I, I think that we will all prosper if we learn how to ask God to allow our angels to stir up riches and treasures up in heaven with our name on them. Because you can't take nothing from down here with you. You can't take nothing from down here with you. And everything that you have belongs to God. So it's, 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 it's like we said earlier, it, it, and, and I just thank God for this lesson. Oh, man, it's just a lesson that can resonate in your spirit, that can put you on that direct path that you, that you will, will, it's like a map that you can go from plan A to B to C to D. And I, I, I can't wait till this is over when you put it on recording where I can, I can go and I'm talking to find out how, how to go online where I can see these things. Because even now, throughout this lesson, God is manifesting things in our spirit that we can take hold to. That we can take grip on that we can we can we can we can call it as it may be it. Mm-hmm. That we can, you know, people we we tend to pray. We say, well, God, God, we we pray and ask God to be the author and the finisher of our faith, but we don't have no faith. So how could we ask Him to do something that we don't even ha- that we won't even have? That you, you understand what I'm saying? We ask Him for something that we don't even want to take hold and grip. We we ask Him for, it, but we don't really want it because if we want it. He said, that's all you need is a grain. We all know how small a grain is, a grain of a mustard seed, that hope is the substance of things and the evidence of not seen. Mm -hmm. So how could you have that if you don't walk into the faith, if you don't take hold to the faith? So I just, I'm thankful. I am so grateful. To be a part of this, this, this lesson, this has really, truly been food for the soul. If you receive it, but you have to, like anything else, you have to receive it. So I encourage us to, we we got to stay focused on God and shut everything else out, and that's what we're not doing. We're not focusing on on God. We asking for this and that and this and that, but we're not asking for the 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 the, the, the soul of certain things like. Supreme Father is saying, you're asking for wisdom, but you're not asking God to, to, to show you and, and lead you and carry you into the trials that will come with wisdom. Some, some come with everything God gives us. So we have to know, you know, it's like Jonah. Jo- Jonah took the long way around, and he got swallowed by the well. But if he would just listen and been obedient, and the, and the thing about it, he ended up right back where he, he <laughs> bless God. I'm just going to Thank you. Where were you supposed to go? No, no. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I always like to hear that story about Jonah because it kind of lets you know that he was a prophet who was trying to get away. And the crazy thing that what he was trying to get away from is going and giving people a prophecy. And he didn't want to give them the prophecy because he did not like the people. That's his whole reason for trying to get away and why he ended up being uh, uh, swallowed by the well because God gave him a prophecy to prophecy to go and take to the people of Nineveh. He did not like the people of Nineveh, so he did everything he could to try not to give them that prophecy. Uh, and that's why he was going in a total, a guy on a ship that actually was going in the opposite direction of Nineveh, uh, so he would not be able to go there. And the ship, uh, a storm uh, came upon the ship, and the people uh, cast lots and find out Jonah was a reason, the, the whole reason behind that storm. And Jonah even told him then, said, if you throw me into the water uh, you know, and get me off of this ship, y'all will not have to deal with the storm. And he thought if he got thrown in the water that he would just die at sea. 
again, thinking that I would rather die than go to Nineveh and give those people the prophecy that God has given me. And after they threw him into the water, instead of dying, a great fish came and swallowed him in his belly. And here Jonah found himself sitting in this belly of this fish um, and not dying there, still being alive, sitting in the belly of this fish. So it is a good story about learning, you know, when God gives you some direction, follow that direction. Uh, our life would sometimes do the same thing. It will swallow you up and uh, keep you alive and living. Can you imagine what it would be like if you were living, uh, you were still, you've been swallowed by a fish, but you didn't die inside that fish, that you were just inside there, uh, uh, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything in there with all, whatever else the fish was taking in, you were in there with it, and knowing that God was still looking to protect you and not let you die within that fish until he had to pray that, you know, I see you're not going to let me die in here, God. You know, please let, let me come forth and get out of this belly of this fish. And when the fish did spit him up, it spit him up right on the shore of Nineveh. Anyone else have any thoughts? Uh, Father Supreme, Father gave us the best encouragement we could have throughout the whole lesson, which was his story. Mm -hmm. He yeah. said he didn't know what was, was the of his son. That was yeah. the story of his son. Of uh, that was Marshall Jr. Uh, that did that. He was the father okay. who yeah. took him there. But uh, that was a story of uh, um, uh, Marshall Jr. who became the tap dancer. Uh, and how he, that first round, because he ended up winning, there was a program called Star Search, because the younger people may not, may or may not remember Star Search, but he was one of the early winners of one of those Star Search programs through tap dancing. And he was telling the story of how that first round that he was involved in, when it came to Miami, to look for people to go on Star Search, that he didn't, he just learned about it in one day, went down there in uh, t-shirts and slacks and found out that he was competing against people that were uh, prepared, uh, not, in, not only prepared, but they were all uh, gussed up and makeup and costumes. And yet he still had that attitude, I can win this. And remember, this is after just being one year of learning tap dancing. But I'm sure that in that one year, he had found how it was impressed on uh, what whether he's called a table of his soul, that he picked it up and he uh, got it so well that he was able to end up winning that whole round of uh, star search from it. Anyone else have any comments? And uh, well, I'd like to wish everyone a happy uh, Memorial Day. We know tomorrow is Memorial Day, a holiday. Um, I think Memorial Day is the one where we uh, celebrate. Is that the one where we celebrate? No, it's Veterans Day is so. What is Memorial Day? The people who died in the in the service. Is that what we is Memorial Day? Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, this Memorial Day the people that I think that we should memorialize is the people who have died in this pandemic. I mean, they're are like soldiers, to me, they're like greater than the soldiers on, on, on the path because they have uh, uh, given their lives to uh, help to, to this pandemic that has, has uh, attacked us and put us at uh, a war. So I think part of that memorial is probably remember is how many people, although I think it's over 100,000 Americans who have uh, lost their existence here. I don't like to say, uh, I heard someone say they lost their souls, but I don't think the souls are lost. Uh, the souls have transitioned. And how many souls have now transitioned to a, uh, or beyond uh, due to this virus? But we have to realize that they are still spirit, that we should memorialize them and remember them remember 
the contributions that they have already made to this world and the contributions that they could have made if we had done better uh, in trying to help them and, and trying to get them to know that even in the, in the spirit world that they can still uh, through their lives that they should help us to see how we should care about one another, how we should work for the health of one another. So with this Memorial Day, I say that in, including those who have died in wars and died in other uh, confrontations that we have, that we are now in a great confrontation and we memorialize their spirit and fight to make sure that we do not take their lives in vain. So is there anything else I'm forgetting to come up? We're almost at the end of this month. Uh, you can still continue with your sage tree, 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 tea for another week. Uh, next Sunday is the 31st, so that'll be the end of your period for the sage tea. Uh, anyone else have any comments, anything that we're missing? Any birthdays or? Um, I, did kind of, I, did wanna, I did have a comment when um about uh, when it came to the um memorial thing and how you were trying to like basically give a better description in terms of um, memorializing like the people in terms of who's been affected by coronavirus. Mm -hmm. You were trying to say you don't like the fact when people say lost their souls, lost their life. The only thing that was true and how you say like the soul is still permanent, the only thing that basically was lost in terms of the, the virus basically in terms of not really take their life, but in terms of their the human, the human part of them. Yes. For people mm -hmm. for people whose human part uh, was affected through the coronavirus, and you know, at least for us, we believe in reincarnation and all of that. Mm -hmm. So they have to now start again, hopefully starting again in a better time, maybe better chances, because you never know for the people who were took with the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Something could have already been going on at that time. It was probably time for that do-over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and sometimes do-overs are because of mistakes that we make. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we say. Some of their contributions have been lost and postponed. Uh, but we do believe that um, their spirit will, will continue on. Uh, there are some deaths that are because uh, 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 are unnecessary because of the way the rest of the world is acting. And I feel that when you have things like this, like our war is really necessary, or can, can we find better ways to handle some of our conflicts? And with the people with the coronavirus, it all, all often shows how we are not complying to so the same thing that we're talking about, the laws and the principles that we have this free will, how we are not complying with even the compassion, uh, to, ha to have compassion for one another, that we are, uh, and when I say we, I'm talking about collectively, that we are too fearful of one another, uh, that we are too greedy about uh, monetary gain, and that it is from this collective uh, uh, fear and greed that some people have to give up their uh, mortal existence when there may have been things that they could have contributed to this. But if the contributions are just going to be more fear, the contributions are just going to be more hatred, uh, then sometimes it is best that there be this clearing out. And we hope that as they go on to the other side, that they will take a different consciousness with them, a different understanding with them, so even if they come back, they're saying, I'm going to come back with a better way of looking at life, a better understanding of life. And that those who of us who are left here actually start to say, what do we need to wake up to? What do we need to do to actually make this a better place for souls to come and express in a material body? Uh, anyone else? Or do you have more that you want to, 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 to comment? But thank you for that comment because it uh, that is true that we sometimes have we I think we have to remember that we have to look things from a st spiritual standpoint and that spiritual standpoint will actually help us to get a uh, a uh, 
a deeper understanding of what's going on and find some ways that how we can change. Because I see it is that some of the biggest changes we have to make is we have to change some of that with the, they call in Ephesians, that spiritual wickedness in high places. That we, how do we fight against that spiritual wickedness that is in these high places that by getting rid of that spiritual wickedness, by taking on these concepts that are based on the truth, how we can make this planet and the lives of the people on this planet a better uh, ground for expressing God's bounty. So anyone else? Yeah, I was going to also say uh, we should take uh, this opportunity to as Memorial Day is approaching us to uh, moralize uh, our spiritual mothers and fathers, uh, you know, that, that paved the way for us, that uh, a lot of us are still uh, surviving and, and, and going forth and living out their prayers because, I mean, you spoke this morning, we know prayers don't expire. And, uh, you know, just watching over us now, you know, and this is the thing that we have to understand. Memorial Day is for all of the above. Yes. So we need to take time out to, to, to take time out to thank our, our founder mothers and fathers, our spiritual mothers and fathers, because they paved the way for us. This is why we, why we at, where we are in the position that we are and who we have became because they, they, they taught us things and they, they showed us how to pray and they, 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 they pray for us when we didn't even know how to pray for ourselves. And that's, that's very in, important if we don't realize that because prayers don't aspire. And a lot of us now are still, we are being held up and lifted up through the, the prayers of our founder mothers and fathers because they understood that through our disobedience, through our righteousness, ratchetness through our everything that we were just gonna uh take the long way around for some reason you know no no matter how much we've seen god work out these miracles and work these things out in their lives we still decided to do what we wanted to do we wasn't ready we wasn't ready you know we wasn't ready so it's 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 they prayers and 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 the prayers that they put before us that have us in the position that we're in now so I just wanted to share that uh, right there. No, no, thank you very much. Because uh, it's like uh, um, uh, St. Teresa was saying earlier, we sometimes need to get a better and higher definition of things. Because when Memorial Day, the first thing, the only thing we, many people think about is those who, di who died in some of the economic wars um, uh, or capitalism type wars that they've had. And like, uh, 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 Dick and Jackson was saying is, do we forget some of those warriors, personal warriors in our lives, our fathers and mothers and grandfathers and mothers and the battles that they had to face and how they faced them with the spiritual principles that we've been talking about, uh, that this is also a good time to remember them and to memorialize their battles, memorialize their, uh, their, the things that they confronted moralizing some of the black men, uh, uh, and uh, well, usually as men, who've been shot for uh, just silly reasons. Like, they, you know, there should be memorials to them and remembering uh, their lives and hope that, that we, again, that we can change the way we look at the world, that we can get rid of some of the spiritual wickedness that just keeps getting us in deeper and deeper trouble with each other when, we should learn that working together uh, is the true answer to living on this planet and having the right values on this planet. So yes, let us remember, you know, in Africa, they would call the ancestors. Remember the ancestors, those who came before you uh, and memorialize them as a part of what you are here to express. I remember other times when I've talked about the ancestral worship, one of the things I love about it is not so much just about uh, putting those ancestors to work, but realize that those ancestors uh, in, in the Dogen tradition of ancestors, 
you look at five at generations behind you and five generations to the future of you. Because in a, a true ancestral worship, you have to see yourself as a, uh, a, a, a working ancestor. You're going to become an ancestor for five generations beyond you, just like five generations before you were what they were considered to be your ancestors, that what you were living in life, the many of the things you had in life were based on five generations before you and five generations after you would be depending on what you're doing now. So a part of that worship and part of moralizing those before you is so that you will keep up the faith. You will keep up the struggle to help five generations beyond you. Anyone else? Now we're going to end it in here. He gives, uh, and I'm talking about the spring father Marshall as part of his recording, he gives a prayer. Uh, and we're going to use that prayer to actually close out. We're not going to use our, our normal prayer. And here he gives a prayer for mankind. Uh, it's not too long, but um, we're going to let the, the his prayer play out. Almost high. Holy God. Bless us as we now decree and affirm thy creation of blessings. A divine promise that shall manifest thy greatness within us. Bless us individually and collectively to attain spiritually and obtain materially our righteous and noble desires. Lift us up from the imposed limitations of others and erroneous perceptions of ourselves. Enlighten, empower, elevate, and enrich us in greater and unlimited measures to a life of fulfillment. Abide in us that we may abide in thee. For if thy spirit abide in us, we shall ask whatever good we desire and we shall manifest in accordance with the wisdom, the love, and the perfecting power of thy will. We ask that I validate this prayer in thy holy name. Amen. 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 And I'd like to thank everyone for being with us. Again, we will be back next Sunday with a lesson um, on the, the message for the month of uh, June. And we'll, like I said, we'll be doing this every Sunday at starting around 10 o'clock. Uh, at 10 o'clock, we usually do some fellowshipping where we can have a chance to talk to each other and greet each other and do some things so you don't have to come at 10 if you can't make it. Um, but because uh, so, we usually only start the lesson probably about 10, 20, 20 10, 30 is when we get into the lesson portion of it. I have to apologize because there was a part that I usually record all of the lesson, and this time I forgot at the beginning uh, of having uh, Supreme Father Marshall talk uh, to start the recording. So I will have to kind of uh, cut some of that into the recording, but I will be able to do that. So you won't miss uh, the words that he gave us and that were recorded. I think I said some things at the beginning that you, uh, I, I don't remember what they are, so they would be uh, not a part of recording. And but again, I'm going to stop recording now. I'll still keep it open so we can have any, uh, uh, if, you, if anyone would like to greet anyone at the end of the day, still be able to do, to, do, to, do, do it. But now I'd just like to say thank you for being a part of our service. Meet us again next Sunday at uh, between 10 to 1020 so we can have another. So I'm going to say thank you. And this ends our recording.